trying to find a place to, um, to empty your mind out. Some people will take a pillow and scream into a pillow, hoping to get all that anger out of your heart. You may be able to get all that frustrate out and scream at the pillow, but that, that doesn't take your problem away. You still got to be able to go forward, and believe me, it takes more than screaming at the pillow to get that peace in your life. It's the fact that in order for God to minister to you tonight, you have to open your heart to Him and say, and surrender whatever you're carrying. If it's carrying something about yourself, if you're asking, wondering, why is this happening to me? And why am I going through all this? Why am I at the bottom of the barrel? Why? Where are you going? How come I'm going through all this? Hallelujah. And it's weighing you down. It's crushing you. It's going to destroy you. It's driving you crazy. And you're trying to find peace. And you ask everyone to pray for you. And nobody seems to be, after they pray, nothing is happening. You say, oh my God, what's wrong? It's the fact that God wants you to come to Him. He's the healer. He's the one that can bring you peace. Jesus said, come up to me. He says, he didn't say go to the pastor or go to your brother and sister and empty your, unload your burden on them. He says, come to me. See, your father knows. He knows everything. What thing you have need of tonight? I want you to understand. God says, I know what you need. Just give it to me. And I will set you free. Just give it all to me. And I will break the yokes. I will take that thing out of your heart. But you've got to give it up. You've got to surrender. You've got to let me take it out of you. You've got to lay it on the altar and says, here it is, God. I don't want this no more because I have it. You ever felt like you're at the bottom? It's a good place to be because that's where God meets you, at the bottom. 
of all the circumstances because he wants you to surrender to him. Instead of trying to figure out how to fix it, why don't you give it all to God? Sometimes the way God fixes, he takes it all out of you. When he takes it out of you, you don't have it no more. It's like a miracle. Can you understand God performing such a miracle that takes out your pain and hurt and loneliness and depression right out of you? You're not alone. All of a sudden, Jesus comes into your heart and guess what? You have a new friend. He's been there all the time. But he says, where have you been? He says, how come you haven't come before? He says, because you were so focused on your problem that you won't let me in. I was trying to say, give it to me. You just hang on to it with your dear life. Hallelujah. But the moment you release, God takes it away. All of a sudden, the burden is lifted. Like right now. Just give it to God right now. And let him have it all. So here it is. Do you realize when you say that, you, you release it when you're letting it go, is when the miracle takes place. See, the miracle comes because you're touching God. You're asking Him. No one else but Jesus. So then we start singing a song that says, It's like, it doesn't have any effect on it. It's not like you. 
it doesn't bother you no more. Because yeah. whatever it was, it's not there no more. There was something inside you that had to leave. And all of a sudden, it, even though your situation seemed like nothing changed, it's, it's you that changed now. Why? Because you came to God. You, you let him have everything. You say, that's it. It's all here. See, the Lord is going to make a way for you. I need to trust God to make a way for you. Like right now. Like you're saying, I know the Lord has made a way for me. I know the Lord has made a way for me. If I shared this in the past too. When we were on live stream years ago and we had Scott Stewart and Sue St. Marie that was on had a chat room and, and somehow the whole service was going on live stream and chat room and all that stuff and people that were watching on live stream would be encouraged to, to get in the chat room and let them bring their prayer requests to everybody there. And what happened, there was a woman that just had given birth to a child that was premature, two months. And because it was premature, amen, she just was so discouraged because the doctor said there's no hope, the child is going to not be able to su survive it. it weighs, I don't know, pound and a half, two pounds. If they will not make it for the next two months, even if they put in the incubator. They say, no, there's no hope at all. And she was crying in her room, uh, in, in, her, in the room that she was staying in the hospital. And she had a cell phone and somehow, she just happened to open her cell phone to the service that was coming live from Sudbury. And she was watching and hearing this message and it was a Wednesday service too. And so she responded and, and basically text on the, on the chat line or talk, I don't know how they get together, but anyway, somehow they got the message through that I want prayer. And Scott called me and they gave me the phone number, get a hold and pray for this woman. Amen. Or she called us and gave the phone number to her. I forget exactly. Anyway, we end up praying for her on the telephone. We pray that God would intervene and God would perform a miracle and God would just, you know, do an awesome thing. Hallelujah. And and that the child will be perfect. There will be no side effects. There will be no problem and she'll survive and, and she'll come up like a miracle. And we pray that prayer that that very moment. Well, two months, three months later, she finally called us back, actually to Scott, and shared the testimony how that baby had survived, recovered, and had no side effects, and the baby was now at home, and she was so happy and glad that God had intervened on her behalf and done this miracle for her. Hallelujah. 
and we were rejoicing with, with her as well since we heard the good news. Hallelujah. But that didn't happen accidentally. That was God was orchestrating because God knew what this woman needed and God knew exactly how to reach her and how she would end up turning the cell phone on and how she ended up hearing the service and how she ended up getting contact with us and us praying for her and then we, the rest is history. You see, don't ever underestimate this. God is the one who draws and God is the one who deals and God is the one that knows where you are. He knows everything that you have needed before you ask Him. When you're at the bottom, you don't feel like you have the victory. When you're hitting at the bottom, everything is upside down. You're depressed, you're lonely, you're empty. And God says, I know, I'm going to lift you up now. But you know, to lift you up, you have to give it up. It's one of the hardest things to do, because we hold on to it. We hold on to the depression. We hold on to our attitudes. We hold on to what eating at us. And we let it eat, eat, eat at us now. And we're not getting no breaks and everybody's praying for you and you're trying to pray and get through and you can't seem to get through and you thought, oh well, how am I going to survive this? This has gone beyond everything I can imagine. See, all it takes is a little prayer. There is peace in Christ When we learn nothing The Lord He built for us When He for our sin Listen to His word Let them come alive If we know Him as He is There is peace in Christ Notice it said There is peace in Christ there is absolutely nothing else that can give you peace except Jesus. And when he does, oh, hallelujah. What an incredible love and compassion. All we have to do is open up. He gives us hope. When hope is gone. Have you ever felt like you lost your hope? When you get to the bottom and you lost your hope, right? He's giving you hope. When there is no hope, you feel like you're at the end. No hope. No matter what you do, right? He gives us strength. See, only God can give you that spiritual strength that doesn't come from man, it comes from the living God. Amen. It says, He gives us strength when we can You know what happens when God gives you strength? He when you can't go on, as a result of this strength that the Holy Spirit is going to minister to you right now, He puts you in the place of shelter, a place like you're in the place of protection. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit overshadows you. 
You're trying to fix it all up. It's just getting worse by the minute. <laughs> it's not until you realize the battle is not yours, but it's God's. You see, Jehoshaphat would have lost the battle if he would have went on his own ability and his own strength. Sometimes we think we can make it without it. I'm going to manage this. I'll grab the bull by the horns and I'm going to fix it up once and for all. That's where you make a mistake. See, Jehoshaphat had enough sense to realize that I can't solve my situation. Of course, he had a bigger situation than we did, but it doesn't matter. Whatever situation you're facing is just as big as it was for Jehoshaphat. And he had enough sense to set himself to pray and seek his face. Amen. Instead of saying, okay, God, I think I'm going to do this, and I'm going to pray this, I thought this is what I want you to do, and all that stuff, he actually emptied himself out. He emptied out his own plans, his own devices, and his own brilliance, and, and his own wisdom, his own armies, and all these things. And say, he just said, let's all to get the whole nation to pray to God, because let, let's... Let's not, let's stop trying to figure out to get the answer to the situation. Hallelujah. And then when they got to that place that began to put their total trust and confidence in God and start saying to God, aren't you my God? Lord, don't you rule over all the kingdoms of this world? And in your hand, is there not might and power that nobody's able to stand against you? So look what I'm facing. And that's exactly how you feel. And I really don't know what to do. Be honest. You really don't know how to fix it. And a key element in that very phrase, the statement Jehoshaphat said, but our eyes are on you. Tonight, when you place your total trust in God, you have laid down all the issues and all the fears and all the doubts, and now you're putting your trust in the love of God because there's no fear in that love. And you're going to trust God even though you don't have an idea what He's going to give you. Can you imagine for God to move on the basis when you finally get out of the way? Too many times we're in the way. We won't let God fix it for us. Hallelujah. He says, the battle's not yours. The battle's not yours. The battle is mine. Get your hands off. This problem is not yours. It's God's. But how many of us were in the battle, in the circumstances that we faced? We hold on to that situation with our dear life. Did you hear me? But God says, the battle's not here. But you don't understand what I'm going through. <laughs> Such a determination. God says, the battle's not yours. Let go. But I can't. You see, because of our blindness and ignorance, we hold on to something and God says, let go. You see, when you let go, you're no longer wrestling. You're not trying to fix it. You're not trying to make it happen. You let it go. And what happens when you let it go? The Lord fixes it. 
you still gotta go and meet, face the situation, but you're not going to face that situation with your fist in the air. You're going with peace. You're walking into a victory. See, the battle's not yours. He's going to fight for you. You see, see, this is trust in God and not in yourself. Oh, hallelujah. What a place to be, amen? amen. To let God have his way in your life. Just give it to him right now. See, only the Holy Spirit can meet your need. I remember years ago I had to come into the crossroads of my life and, and we had a problem. The church had split, people had left the church. And I was looking at the situation and I was saying to me, myself, I said, what in the world went wrong? How come this is happening? How come this is split has taken place? I tried to figure it out. I had couldn't figure it out if I tried. Then guilt and condemnation and the embarrassment that you have failed and you was a talk of the town. You felt so unworthy and you felt like that. You have been defeated. You have like lost the battle and you're asking God what am I going to do now? I want to know the answer to this situation and the more I try the more I pray the more heavier the burden God the more I try to seek for the answer to find out what was wrong what went wrong just like your situation that you're going through. So finally I came to that place and I, I had given it all to God. We went to another church for service because the people were so hurt by the situation that even when I tried to minister to them, they couldn't receive anything because they were so hurt. I couldn't even minister to them. So we went to another church and they preached and I said, God, just use that pastor. That pastor from the Pentecostal church. Not the Pentecostal church. Use that pastor. Minister to our people. Pastor Hayden. We were in that place right there. Somebody's ringing a doorbell. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. And while the bell was ringing, <laughs> Lord of God, when I was sitting in there and I felt the burden, I could see that what was taking place, and I understood in my heart that what had gone wrong, and, and I didn't know what to do, but the Lord gave me an answer when I was sitting there in that church while the word was being ministered. I honestly don't think that it had anything to do with what he was preaching. God was speaking to my heart. And you know what he said to me? To give me an answer to this problem that I couldn't understand with all this place. And he said that question, will you love them like I do? I said, you got to be kidding. You want me to love these people? in what just happened, it's been happening for a few years. And I realized then that I could not love them. I says, to love like you do, you're gonna to have to do some changes in me. And I said, but I want to love them like you do, but I can't do it myself. And if you give me grace right now, you come and heal my heart and touch me. I'll go to the altar and, and I'll lay it all there, my whole burden that I was carrying. 
and God give me enough to love them like you did. And I went to the altar and guess what happened? The moment I went there and lay it on the altar and the Lord touched me and all of a sudden this thing was lifted off of me. I noticed that when I woke up or when I got up off the floor and the Holy Spirit touched me, I could not remember what burden, what people said, and what people have done. It's almost like they never did anything. It was completely erased out of my heart. That's exactly what God needs to do with your heart. He needs to take what is in your heart. He needs to wash all this stuff out of it so you don't have the memory of carrying a burden and going over and over and over again just carrying this load. And when you release that, then God will set you free. Amazing, isn't it? That's all it takes. Just let it go. Let God have it. Amen. Hallelujah. What, a, what an incredible experience, say that. For God to be able to intervene in such a man. Hallelujah. That's not the only time I had that kind of experience happen. It's a split that we had before and it was very devastating. The whole city knew that we were at a meeting with Stephen Ostaisen and everybody had heard, it seemed like the whole city know. When, when I walked into that meeting with three, four hundred people, I can see when you look at this, the faces of the people that they have this funny look like you. They look at you like, I wonder what he's been doing now. <laughs> it was bad enough that I, I felt pretty, pretty lousy. I didn't even really feel like being there, but I was there anyway. And, and uh, Stephen Ostrich had asked me to go to the front at the last night. And I want you to get up here and testify and talk to the people. And, and I, I was trying to talk to Mother. I don't want to go up there. I have nothing to say. I, I mean, I don't have anything to say. I really, honestly, I don't have anything to say because I was feeling so down about what's happened to the church and the people and the, the fighting that had taken place. And it was devastating. It's the most worst thing to see happen. My heart was torn in half. You ever had your heart torn in half? That's exactly how I felt. And now he's wanting me to get up there and testify. He said, oh, no, no. And I was praying, oh God, don't let him call me up. Lord, Lord, don't let me go up there. No, 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 no. And I, I was arguing with my heart. I didn't want to say a word. I was afraid to say anything because I had nothing to say. My heart was empty. My heart was so devastated. And so he had us up there and he's going one by one to talk to people what they what God has done in their life in the meetings and I had nothing to say. <laughs> I felt lousy being there. And guess what happened? Came my time. He put the mic in front of me now, Pastor Thomas. Tell me what's happening with you. And I didn't even have a chance to open my mouth. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God hit me and filled me. And I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And all that stuff that I was carrying and how I felt about myself, all this stuff that was inside me, all of a sudden, I got slain in a power and I began to laugh uncontrollably. All this thing was coming on us laughing for about a, almost half an hour, if not an hour, and I was stuck on the floor and I never got a chance to say anything. <laughs> I was just laughing. And, and I was so, and when I was laughing on the floor and I realized that what had happened and, and uh, I never did tell anybody anything. <laughs> Glory to God, I didn't need to say anything. 
because whatever the Holy Spirit did that very moment can only be done by Him. And He did an incredible touch with Him when they went home from there. All the stuff that was eating and burning me and weighing me down was all gone. And that's how God brings healing to your heart. That is, if you want God to heal, if you're open, just by being honest. Say, God, we've got to change this. Hallelujah. And that's the reason over the years I, I know God knows what you have need of tonight. You that are on YouTube, God is talking to you right now and you can just open up. You can open up in your seat. You can just reach to God because it's not, it's not me that's going to change you. It's God. That's if you want to change. If you want to surrender and humble to Him, because God gives grace to the humble, He resists the proud, He gives grace to the humble. I do willing to humble yourself to God. I Erase all the things, 
all the things from the past been washed away, and that everything now become brand new in the love of Christ. Go now, go away, 
respond and receive this message and, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch you tonight wherever you are and realize God has come and ministered to you tonight by His Spirit and met you where you are and God will bless you. Amen. Just remember, it's God who's calling you The Spirit is calling, come to what you say, humble your
Hallelujah. And you that are watching on YouTube, you can bless us too. Amen. Just uh, write to us, 360 Perro Street, Sapri, Ontario. Amen. Sapri, Ontario, P3B and 2M7. Amen. You can always call us, 705-690-1062, and, and we give you the direction and how to, you know, give any offering, or if you want to send it by e-transfer, just write it down, pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, at abundant, A-B-U-N-D-A-N-T, life, L-I-F-E, Sudbury, S-U-D-E-U-R-Y, dot O-R-G. Amen. And God will bless you. Amen. Father, we bless the offering of those that are sending the offerings. Bless those that have been ministered tonight on YouTube. Be blessed and highly favored of God. And if you'd like to come to our service in Sudbury, if you happen to be in Sudbury, if you'd like to watch us, just uh, prescribe and you can watch us all the time. God bless.